All right. Hello, my name is Brett Cass, and I'm the technical manager of Net Zero Housing at the CHBA. In this short webinar recording, I will be taking you through a detailed look at program bulletin number seven of the CHBA's Net Zero Home Labeling Program. This bulletin outlines a new pathway for homes to be able to prove compliance under the program. This is covered in the new appendix to the program's technical requirements, Appendix A. To start, I will note that as of the publication of this webinar recording, Appendix A, the Net Zero Ready Alternative Compliance Path, has now been published. Homes may now label under these technical requirements. The first part of this presentation will cover the context behind this new development in addition to the program. We'll cover why the Net Zero Council decided to pursue this approach. I'll detail the broader communications associated with this new technical criteria. In section two, I'll get into the specific technical requirements that the homes must meet in order to comply with Appendix A. I'll cover what types of homes are eligible for this compliance path and why. I will also, of course, take a closer look at the energy use targets themselves. In the third section, I'll take a few minutes to cover modeling requirements. This section will be of particular interest to energy advisors who will be required to ensure they're modeling homes correctly under this new path. I'll outline the calculation methodology, submission requirements, as well as the project registration workbook. I'll begin with some context. The challenge that led to the development of Appendix A, the alternative compliance path, in its simplest form is a challenge of geometry. Many small compact housing forms struggle to have enough roof space for solar panels. These housing forms, even with the most optimal roof designs, may never be able to achieve zero gigajoule ratings using our existing solar technology. That's because of space constraints, regardless of the energy use conservation measures implemented by the builder or renovator. It comes down to a simple ratio, comparing the building's conditioned living space versus the available space for solar panels. Let me explain. Here we have a hypothetical high performance home, a tiny home. The slab on grade home has 1200 square feet of living space and is 1.5 stories in height. The builder has aimed to follow the CHPA's net zero home labeling program requirements and is hoping to label the project as net zero ready. As a result, the builder has implemented several energy saving measures to get the building's total energy consumption down to an impressive 40 gigajoules per year. The pie chart shows what the builder has been able to achieve from an energy load standpoint. Now, to achieve net zero ready, this builder has to be able to offset the 40 gigajoules of modeled annual energy consumption with at least 40 gigajoules of solar energy production. To do so, they need a solar array of this size. Unfortunately, they can only fit an array of this size. They can only offset slightly more than half of the home's energy consumption at 23 gigajoules per year of solar energy production potential. One might suggest that the builder should go back to the drawing board and add even more energy saving measures. Let's say this builder did have thousands of dollars more to spend on even more insulation and even better mechanicals. If so, and the builder was able to achieve, say, an additional 50% reduction on space heating and an additional 50% 50% reduction on water heating um, with these new alterations, then this would be the new load breakdown. The total energy would drop, but only marginally, to 34.3 gigajoules per year. There would still be a deficit of more than 11 gigajoules to, to make up with generation. It's quite a challenge. This example was actually reasonably favorable for this builder, a sloped, unobstructed, perfectly south-facing roof with no site limitations or shading from other buildings. Now imagine the same energy offset calculations of even denser product with even less favorable ratios for renewable offset potential as pictured here. Consider three-story townhomes, row homes with flat roofs, homes with terrace roofs and balconies, or even the, the lower units of MERBs, and the list goes on. The focus for this project was specifically to develop a non-solar focused path to labeling for housing forms that have the most difficulty doing so. 
As a result, the Appendix A technical requirements have been written to target three following housing types. Attached houses, such as row homes and semis, tiny homes and laneway suites, as well as MERBs. The CHPA Net Zero Council recognized that there is a fast growing market for smaller, compact, often multifamily product types that by nature of their design, often struggle to have enough renewable energy generation potential to offset their consumption. The Net Zero Council recognized the current barriers within the Net Zero Home Labeling Program to include these small homes and voted a directive to the Net Zero Technical Committee to develop a proposed solution to labeling these homes as net zero ready. This plan would help to support the industry's voluntary adoption of net zero ready housing for all housing types. That proposed solution was to still be technically rigorous, still be clear and concise, and by its nature, be more inclusive, recognizing the construction of smaller housing forms. The result was a two-page technical requirement document that serves as an appendix to the net zero technical requirements. The document outlines the steps the houses must achieve in order to comply as net zero ready under this new path. Page one of the document covers requirements that the houses must meet in two sections. The first section is application and eligibility, and the second section is the very concise technical requirements. Within this is table A1. Table A1 forms the basis of this net zero ready alternative compliance path. This is a series of energy use targets that are based on the performance of net zero ready homes. The second page simply covers the calculation methodology used to comply with Table A1. In Section 2, I'm now going to take a deep dive into the two page Appendix A document and describe its background and how it was developed. I'll also talk about another very important piece, how this new net zero ready alternative compliance path impacts the communication and marketing of CHBA's net zero ready tier. To begin, application and eligibility. In order to effectively develop a fair eligibility criteria, there needed to be a cap on the size of homes that the energy use targets could be used for. Detached houses must not exceed 450 meters cubed. Attached houses and MERB single units must not exceed 600 meters cubed. These targets represent the upper end in terms of volume of the housing forms that were being targeted for inclusion into the program. The cap values selected were based on the data set of 1250 net zero and net zero ready homes submitted through the program at the time of this development. Now, it is recognized that with any hard line threshold, there will be projects that are ineligible, but just marginally, potentially based on a few meters cubed. The maximum heated volume cutoffs decided for use in Appendix A may exclude projects that slightly exceed their respective house volumes of 600 meters and 450 meters cubed. Because of this, a level of flexibility has been introduced through the request for inclusion process. Builders of projects that exceed the heated volume threshold may submit a request for inclusion to be reviewed by the Net Zero Technical Committee to potentially be voted for inclusion. The Net Zero Technical Committee will have a percentage-based process and criteria directing how they should consider their voting. This will allow the committee to at the very least review projects that otherwise would have no avenue for labeling. Now we'll look at the technical requirements section of Appendix A. Remember that this technical requirements section serves in addition to that of the full net zero technical requirements document. The full document may be the technical requirements for new homes or the technical requirements for renovations, depending on which type of project is labeling. There are four different energy metrics with varying targets. They are overall energy improvement, annual energy consumption, mechanical energy use intensity, and total energy use intensity. At least one energy use target must be met for compliance. This flexible approach was taken because it's well known in energy modeling that some, building form, that some buildings perform more favorably according to certain metrics than they would with others. As mentioned, 
Table A1 includes four different energy use metrics. As stated above, builders must meet or exceed at least one of the applicable targets to prove the house's compliance with the table. Overall energy improvement is a metric likely familiar to many involved with the 2020 National Building Code Energy Tiers, or the BC STEP Code. All of these metrics are calculated by the Energy Advisor using HOT 2000. More on the calculation methodology will be covered in Section 3. Annual energy consumption is simply an absolute energy target of which the baseload is excluded. You might note that these annual energy consumption targets are quite low, even with the baseload removed. It's expected that these targets will likely make sense for use by very small dwellings that do not perform well against the other three targets, potentially small MERB units, among others. Next, mechanical energy use intensity is a measure of the home's mechanical energy load divided by the total heated floor area. Similarly, total energy use intensity considers the home's total annual energy consumption divided by the total heated floor area. There are two variables indicated in table one on the left, climate zone and heated volume. To improve the fairness of the targets, there are varying targets dependent on the two size categories and four climate zones. For example, homes built in climate zone four would have the following targets. If that home was very small, less than 300 meters cubed, the specific targets would be here. Whereas if that home was greater than or equal to 300 meters cubed, these would be the targets. Keep in mind that the table caps out at 450 meters cubed for detached homes and 600 meters cubed for attached homes in MERBs, as described in the application and eligibility section. A question that likely a question that likely comes to mind with regard to table A1 is how are the energy use targets decided upon? And the answer is data. An analysis of the data from the 1250 net zero and net zero ready homes that had been labeled in the CHBA program at the time of the analysis. This scatter chart on the screen uses dots to represent each of these 1250 homes. The chart compares the home's heated volume to the amount of total energy the home is modeled to consume annually. It's no surprise there's a strong correlation here, but our focus was specifically on smaller compact housing types for this project. So we looked particularly at this group of homes here, and we tested them against a variety of energy performance metrics. As you know, we settled on four energy metrics to keep in the table. Here's a quick look at a portion of the data set that was reviewed closely to make decisions on where to set each target. These are all of the small attached homes in the eligible heated volume of less than 600 meters cubed. In general, targets were typically selected to align with the top performing 30th percentile within a particular energy metric. Climate zone and house size were also analyzed in detail using these models to determine variations in each energy use target. There's obviously now quite a few targets or paths to get to net zero energy ready performance. To simplify this, I think it's helpful to look at it this way. We now essentially have four energy efficiency targets that any given home can attempt to meet, or an energy generation offset potential target of zero gigajoules, which was initially our only target. Achieving any of these five targets provides the same CHBA net zero ready label. On the communication side, that means the same comfort, same energy efficiency, same better indoor air quality, etc. Let's look at how this new path impacts the communication and marketing in the net zero home labeling program. To be clear, we've maintained this program as a two tier labeling program. The alternative compliance path only applies to net zero ready. Regardless of how the home achieves either label, the brand promise remains the exact same, the ultimate in comfort and efficiency. In either labeling path, homes still maintain the same value proposition that buyers want when they decide on a CHBA net zero or net zero ready home. 
the values of better indoor air quality, reducing one's environmental impact, reducing utility costs with the assurance of a third party qualified label are all maintained with the alternative compliance path. Now the definition of net zero ready has been expanded to consider this new alternative compliance path. CHBA qualified net zero ready homes are built to the exact same efficiency requirements as net zero homes, but do not yet have renewable energy systems such as solar electric panels installed. Net zero ready homes that have sufficient on-site generation ability have been designed and constructed to easily install renewable energy systems in the future whenever the homeowner is ready. Essentially, the second sentence means that some net zero ready homes have been designed to install renewable energy tomorrow and others, such as those using the alternative compliance path, may not have the means tomorrow, but in the future, renewable energy may be provided to these homes via more efficient renewables, green energy credits, or even a re renewable energy source grid. For today, the qualified net zero builder or renovator has done their part to ensure a super low energy, comfortable, healthy, net zero ready home for the occupant. In this third part of the presentation, we'll look at the submission requirements for the homes. In general, you see that there are very few changes to how projects will be submitted. When submitting a project through the Net Zero Ready Alternative Compliance Path, the submission requirements are almost no different than before. One HOT 2000 file and one completed project registration workbook are required. This HOT 2000 file must prove to be compliant with all of the program requirements, including Table A1. As with all other files, the second portion of the submission requirements is the project registration workbook. This is an Appendix A specific workbook. We'll touch more on these unique tabs shortly. It's imperative that the project registration workbook Appendix A is submitted for these home files, as this is the key indicator to the service organization and CHBA that these homes are complying with the Appendix A path. On, on the Appendix A project registration workbook, there are five worksheet tabs. There's also a HOT 2000 help, help tab, which supports tab five. Starting from the top, I will detail how each tab has changed or stayed the same. Tab one and two are virtually unchanged when compared to the current workbook. Tab one does have some minor text edits to reflect the fact that this workbook is now exclusively for net zero ready homes. For that reason, these changes do not need to be detailed in this recording. Tab three, the verification checklist, also has some minor edits. The exempt sections have been removed from the checklist, sections 1.2.1, 2.2.4, and 2.4. There also has been a short Appendix A section added to the end of the checklist. We will look at tab three in more detail on the next slide. You'll notice that there are no solar PV ready checklists or commissioning reports in the Appendix A workbook. This is because on-site solar generation capacity is not a requirement under this path. Tab four is the indoor air quality checklist. This checklist remains the exact same. Tab five is entirely new, the energy use targets tab. I will present the details of this tab as well as the HOT 2000 tab in a moment. We are currently looking at the last section of the verification checklist. Line one ensures that the homes are of the correct size to comply. Line two ensures an Energuide label is still achieved. Line three ensures that net zero ready energy performance requirements of table A1 are met. And line four is actually the single requirement that was brought over from the PV ready checklist. It states where applicable, such as when solar PV may be installed in the future, roof structure design and, uh, designed and constructed with solar ready trusses or equivalent and roof structure design will support additional loads of at least 0.17 kilopascals or 3.5 pounds per square foot associated with PV system. As you'll note, the requirement is included with the preference of where applicable which allows the builder flexibility based on the intent of the project. 
We are aware that solar PV is of interest to homeowners of net zero ready homes. And for that reason, it makes sense to prepare the structure for the potential of PV in the future. This was decided as the only PV requirement to include because it is the only structural based requirement. This structure will hopefully be around for 100 plus years and will therefore be ready for PV if and where applicable. Now we will look at the Energy Use Targets tab, tab 5. For the instructions, the Energy Advisor is to indicate the climate zone and heated floor area of the home. These cells are drop down boxes. When climate zone and heated floor area are adjusted by the user of the Excel spreadsheet, the targets in the Energy Use tab table below will change accordingly. The targets column will then reflect the appropriate target based on table A1. The energy advisor is to input at least one compliant energy use target result into the results column to prove the home's compliance. These results can be pulled directly from HOT 2000 as described in the HOT 2000 help tab. These results should be rounded based on the criteria outlined in page two of appendix A which align with how HOT 2000 outputs are rounded. The HOT 2000 help screen simply shows users how and where to collect each of the energy use metrics results. First, when modeling the proposed home in HOT 2000, energy advisors should ensure that the file is in version 11.12 or newer, and that the rule set is set to EnerGuide Rating System 2020 NBC. Once you go to the Calculate screen of your HOT 2000 file, you'll be able to see the following results. Total energy use intensity can be found on the Base tab screen, Annual energy consumption, Overall energy improvement, and Mechanical energy use intensity can be found on the Building Code Metrics tab screen. Those results, or at the very least one of them, would then be inputted by the energy advisor into the results column on the energy use targets table within the project registration workbook in order to prove compliance. Now, there are a few other submission notes and reminders I will highlight. The first is that the input requirements for HOT 2000's info fields two and three, as described in the Net Zero Technical Procedures Guidebook document, require no changes when submitting a home through this path. In addition, the Net Zero Ready label that is issued will be the exact same as any Net Zero Ready home label. The trigger for the service organization and the CHBA to know that a home is in fact being submitted through the alternative compliance path is that the EA will be submitting the Excel workbook titled Project Registration Workbook Appendix A. This is the indicator that will determine the appropriate quality assurance and compliance triggers for the file. In terms of housing types, at this time, MERBs must be submitted as individual units. Currently, there is no path for net zero ready alternative compliance for whole building MERB modeling. And lastly, please remember that net zero ready renovations do in fact fall into the scope of the net zero ready alternative compliance path so long as they fall within the eligible heated volume requirements of Appendix A. To wrap up this webinar recording, I will conclude with a summary. The Net Zero Ready Alternative Compliance Path has now been published. The technical requirements became effective April 1, 2024. The new labeling option came about as a solution to an existing challenge the challenge for smaller compact housing types to label under the program's previous technical requirements. The alternative compliance path documentation consists of the Appendix A technical requirements, as well as the Project Registration Workbook Appendix A. From a communication standpoint, the CHBA's Net Zero Home Labeling Program remains a program of two tiers. This path is only applicable for Net Zero Ready homes. And lastly, all documentation can be downloaded by members at chba.ca slash nzprogramrequirements. Thank you.